Alright friends, so with that we have covered now the first type of the tables that we have in databases, the permanent tables where you create a table and it's gonna live forever until you go and drop it. Now we're gonna talk about another type of tables in databases, we have the temporary tables. So let's understand what are temporary tables. So temporary tables, or sometimes we call them as a shortcut, temp tables, they store intermediate results in a temporary storage in the database during a session. And the database automatically drops these tables after the session ends. So let's understand what this means. Now we have learned in the CTIS, we could use a query in order to retrieve data from one table, and then it puts the intermediate results in brand new table in the database. So with that, we are creating another table based on a query. The same thing for the temporary tables. We have as well a query that goes and retrieves the data from a table, and as well the database is gonna go and create a new brand table in the database that has the structure and the data from the result of the query. So it is exactly as the CTIS, what is the difference here? Well, it is about the lifetime of the table. Now the database tables that we have created using create insert or CTIS, those tables gonna stay permanent and they gonna live in the database as long as you don't drop them. So even if the system is completely offline, the data can stay in the database once it is online again. But the temporary tables gonna get deleted and dropped from the database automatically once the session ends. So what session means? Like once you open the client and you connect to the database and you are start doing queries, we call the time between connecting ourselves to the database and disconnecting from the database, we call this a session. So that means once you close the client and you disconnect from the database and maybe shut down your PC and do something else, what can happen? The database is gonna go and destroy and delete all the temporary tables that you have created during the session. So that means the table gonna live as long as you have a session and you can access during this time the table as you are accessing any other permanent table. So this is what we mean with temporary tables or sometimes we call it as a shortcut temp tables. Okay, so now let's check the easiest syntax ever. So for the temporary table, the syntax gonna look like this. You're gonna have like a query select from where and as we learned in the CTIS, if you go and say into then the table name, it's gonna go and create a physical new table. But now if you want it as a temporary table, what you're gonna do? You're gonna just put hash before the name of the table. Then SQL can understand, okay, now we are talking about temporary table and the database gonna store it in that temporary storage. So it is very simple. This is the syntax of the temporary tables. So, so far we have learned that we have a database called SalesDB and inside it we can find the tables that we have created, the customers, employees, orders and so on. Those are our tables and they are always there. Like if you go and close everything and then start it or on the next day, you're gonna find always those tables with the same data. So they're gonna exist as long as we are not dropping them. Now the question is where do we find the temporary tables? Well, as we learned, if you go over here at the system databases, you will find multiple databases from the SQL server and normally only the database administrator has an access to this. And one of those databases called tempdb, temporary database. So let's go inside it. Now we can find multiple objects and one of them we can find here the temporary tables. And now of course we don't have anything inside it because we didn't create anything. So let's go and create one. We have already an open session and active session with the SQL server. As you can see here, we are connected to the database and we can start creating temporal tables. So now what is the plan? I would like now to do few modifications on the table orders, but I will not do it directly at the table orders. I would like to take a copy from the sales DB and create from it a temporary table. So let's go and do that. What do we need first? We need a query. So I would like to select everything, all the columns, all the rows from the table orders. So from sales orders so this is my query now so far nothing is created we have only select statements but now in order to create a temporary table what you're gonna do we're gonna put a statement between the select and from so exactly before the from go over here and say into then in order to make sure it is a temporary table we use hash and then the table name so we're gonna call it 
orders. So that's it. We have our query and in between we have the into and make sure you are using hash in order to be a temporary table. So let's go and execute it. And now we can see that 10 rows are affected and we don't have an error. And now of course we cannot see it yet because we have to go and refresh the object explorer. So let's go and do that. And now let's expand it and now we can see our temporary tables as you can see it is at the schema dbo because we haven't defined any schema and this is the default one from the database so nice now we have the table and let's go and check few stuff so let's go and select the table itself so select star from and make sure to say hash orders let's go and select it and now we are getting the data from the temporary table and not from the original table the orders in the database sales db so all those informations comes from the temporary table now of course you can do whatever you want to this temporary table because it's not that important and it's anyway gonna get deleted so let's say that i would like to delete all the orders where the order status equal to delivered so let's go and do that what we're gonna do delete from our hash orders so make sure you are selecting the temporary table and then where we're gonna say the order status equal to what i say delivered yeah delivered so delivered like this let's go and execute it okay with that it says five rows are affected let's go and select it again so select from hash orders and let's check that so as you can see now we don't have all orders we have only the orders where the status equal to shipped so all delivered orders are removed and now we can do whatever we want to this copy we can analyze it we can modify it we can go and insert a new data so we can do whatever manipulation we want on this copy and now if you say you know what I like this result and I would like to have it not only during the session, maybe I'm going to need it for tomorrow or something. So now what we're going to do, we're going to do the exact opposite. We're going to now store the result of the temporary table back to our database so that we don't lose this intermediate result. So in order to do that, we're going to say into and then make sure to specify the sales dot because we want to select the correct schema. And then let's say it is orders and I'm going to call it test like this. So let's go and execute it. So it says five rows are affected. Now we have to see those informations in the sales DB. We still don't have this table over here. So right click on the DB and then refresh it. So let's go again to the tables. And now you can see we have our new table orders test. So it is amazing, right? What we have done is we have took a copy from the original table orders to a temporary space. We have done some modifications and play with the data and we have done some analyzes. And then the end result of our temporary table, we have loaded back to another new table called orders test in order maybe in the next day to keep working on it. So it is a really nice way to do changes in place where you say, you know what, it is temporary and whatever mistakes you make, it's okay. It is like playground. So now we still have an active session with the database and our temporary table gonna be always here. Now let's see what can happen if we end our session. So in order to do that, let's go and just close everything. So I will just close and will not store anything. So with that, we have now ended the session. Let's go and start it again and see whether we still have the temporary table. So we have now again to connect to the SQL server and now we have another session. So that means the old session is already lost. Let's go to the databases, to the system databases, to the temp DB, and let's go to the temporary tables. As you can see, the database already cleaned up everything. And this space is again empty for any new temporary table that I'm going to create. So as you can see, once you close the session, everything going to get lost. Now let's go back to our sales DB over here to the tables. We can see the table that we have created orders tests. It is still living here and still has the data that we have created. So this is how things works with the temporary tables in SQL. Now let's see how the database server executed the temporary SQL. So now let's say that you are as a data analyst, you have created a query and then you say into a temporary table. Now the database engine gonna identify the query and first it's gonna go and execute the query and then it's gonna go and execute it and maybe you're gonna get the data from the table orders and after the query is executed the database engine now has the results now two things can happen first the database engine gonna go and store the metadata informations in the system catalog and now the second thing the database engine gonna create a table but this time not 
in the users but in the temporary storage in the disk so the table gonna live there for a short time and now what you can do you can write multiple SQL queries that are doing maybe multiple analysis on top of this table so each time you select something the database engine has to go to the temporary storage and fetch the data from there and now once you are finished and let's say you close your clients the session between you and the database can end and now the database can understand okay there is no more connection to this user and it's gonna go and clean up now the temporary storage with any tables that are created from this session. So that means the database is automatically cleaning up the storage maybe for other sessions. So this is how the database engine works with the temporary tables. So now the question is, why do we need temporary tables? Let's see the following scenario. Now let's say that in our source database, we have a table called orders. And now we would like to go and load the table in our data warehouse. We have to do several transformations in order to prepare the data for the analysis in the data warehouse. So maybe you have one query to remove the duplicates and another one to handle the nulls. And maybe you are doing filtering and cleaning up. And the last step you would like to aggregate the data and now of course those queries those transformations want to change the content of the table orders and there is no scenario where you can do that directly on the source database and of course this is not allowed that's why in data warehousing we have to go and get our own copy of the data and then on top of this data we can do our transformations now one way to do this using the temporary tables so you have one script in order to extract the data from the table orders and put it in temporary table as an intermediate result and then you come with the transformations and all those queries and they start manipulating and changing the data of this extra copy in the temporary table and the last step you have the load where you go and load the final version of the intermediate results in the database this is if you would like to do the whole etl before inserting the data to the database so now the orders table and the final table in the data warehouse both of them are tables so they are permanent tables and they will stay there as long as we don't drop them so they are very important tables but now for the intermediate results it is not that important it is just an intermediate step that we have done in order to have our extra copy of the data to manipulate it and so on in order to prepare it to be inserted in the data warehouse so after we loaded it in the data warehouse this copy of the data is not any more important it shouldn't stay like for a long time that's why in this scenario maybe we can go and use the temporary tables instead of normal tables for the intermediate results and that's because only of one advantage that the database is gonna go and do an automatic clean up after the whole session ends so it comes out of the box automatically from the database so that means I don't have to deal with the dropping mechanism of this table for the next load. If there is like something wrong in the data warehouse, you would like always to check the copy where the transformations are done in order to debug and find issues. So I don't normally use temporary tables in these scenarios. I use just normal tables. But for other small projects, maybe this makes sense. So this is one use case on when to use the temporary tables in your projects. We use it in order to store intermediate results temporary until we are done with the session. And then once we are done, the database can go and drop that temporary table. All right, guys, now a quick talk about the temporary tables. To be honest, I never use this in my projects. If I need an intermediate result in one query, I can go and use the CTEs. And if my intermediate result is very important, then I put it in either view or CTIS. But it is nice technique to learn. Maybe you can utilize it in one of your projects. All right, guys, so now let's have a quick summary about tables. Tables in database are like spreadsheet or grid that contains columns and rows. And your actual data are stored in these tables. And we have learned there are two types of tables. We have permanent tables and temporary tables. Permanent tables lives in the database forever as long as you don't drop them. But in the other hand, the temporary tables, they have short lifetime. They will be dropped from the database once you end the session. Now we have learned as well there are two methods on how to create tables in databases. The first method is create insert. This method involves two steps. The first one is 
defining and creating the table. And the second step is by inserting the data inside this new table. So you are creating something from the scratch. And the second method we call it CTAS. It create as well a brand new table, but based on the result of a query. So this type is done with only one step, but it always needs another existing table. And we have learned as well the difference between tables and views, where the main advantage of using tables created from CTIS is that to ensure the performance is fast enough at the end of the users or your reporting system. So we use CTIS instead of views if the logic of the view is very complex and takes a lot of time to be executed in the database. And one more nice use case for the CTIS is that we can go and persist a snapshot of the data in order to analyze a bug and data quality issue and to ensure that we have the exact data in order to find a solution for the bug and the issue. Now we have learned as well that we can use temporary tables in order to store intermediate results in a temporary storage. And the main advantage of the temporary table is the database automatically drops all the temporary tables when the session ends. And that's because for you, the intermediate results are not that important to live long time. All right, my friends. So with that, we have covered everything about the SQL tables and how to use them in SQL projects. And next, we're going to go and recap about the five methods and we're going to compare them side by side. If you like this video and you want me to create more content like this, I'm going to really appreciate it if you support the channel by subscribing, liking, sharing, commenting, all those stuff going to help the channel with the YouTube algorithm and as well my content gonna reach the others so thank you so much for watching and i will see you in the next tutorial bye